All right, so I'm going to be reacting to this uh, the warning interview, Aftershock 2022. For the warning interview, Aftershock 2022. Hopefully, that's not too distracting with some Halo. Um. So you built a family. Yes, we actually did. It's been amazing touring with them. Not only like since we look up to them so so this is much. Touring with a hell it's storm. been great getting to know them, see them every night. It, they have an amazing show, and they have shown so much love and support to us that. That's cool. Oh my God, we're super grateful for it, and their crowd like. The crowd is also super cool. The Hailstorm fan base is the best. They're so loving. And along with our our fan base, they make a great team. And it's crazy to think that the first interview we had was in Berkeley. That feels like a lifetime ago. Like, I I feel like we all grew so much as people in the last couple of months. Like, April. April. It was April. It was freaking April. I can't I imagine that. so. That's insane. And uh, it's been an incredible experience to be touring the US for the, like, four months. Like, it's been. We've been more in the U.S. than in our own home, and, but it's been great. No, has, That's kind of cool. Has Hailstorm acted as mentors at all? I mean, are, are they kind of, you know, giving you tips on performing? What's that dynamic been like? Oh, for sure. I mean, we've been learning so much from them. We toured with them for a total of 10 weeks, and we jammed together. Uh, Lissy gave Danny a guitar at one Oh, that's point. so cool. I mean, I feel like that's definitely I think I've, I think I've been told about that, though. And more than advice, we've been sharing a lot of different experiences that we've had, like both of them, because um, it, there's never a boring day in the life of rock and roll. There's always something that happens. Oh, so, that's so. Um, yeah, we've been sharing experiences and learning from them, so that's been great. Right, yeah. And now, uh, let's not forget about your own shows. Uh, two oh, very man. This is Mark. I'll be like, give me uh, an example. had to be incredible. They were absolutely amazing. We had uh, not played in Mexico City for four years because we live in Monterrey. Um, and the crowd was absolutely insane. It was the first time that we played our whole uh, new album called Error. Oh, and a great album, being, too. Like, in Mexico City for the past four years. And coming back like i don't know how to explain how important the venue we played it is it's el teatro metropolitan and we sold out two nights at that venue which is absolutely insane so we just felt really monday. on a monday we were just <laughs> so on a, so on a monday <laughs> we were just so on a monday for all the support and to receive it like that after that's so cool also like being so much time in the u.s and then coming back to our country and being received that way it was just so so nice. On a Monday, no, who sells I'm out sure on a Monday? Saw the warning that does. Oh, it okay, like that's cool. Around the venue itself was just blocks and blocks of people selling T-shirts and yes. custom yes. merchandise. All this different. Okay, stuff. that Is was that, like that has to blow your mind. It, it, it like we were just so shocked. I never expected to have like, uh, how do you say pirata in English? Like the, the yeah, like the fake Wait. merch. Oh, but the it fake was merch. Like Keychains and mugs oh. and like notebooks. Oh. And we're like. Oh my god. I'm not a fan of fake merch. I'm not a fan of fake merch. I am not a fan of fake merch. That that is that is an argument that could bring some division uh between me and other uh I guess other reactors. I'm not a fan of fake merch. I think it's stupid. I think it's so stupid. It's it's like you're piggybacking. It's like it's like it's like you really are piggybacking off the band in a way that's kind of grimy. It's like you're selling, you're selling their shirts, uh, not their shirts. It's your own style, I guess. But it's the money doesn't go to the band or anything. It's not really supporting the band at all. It's not supporting the band at all. In fact, uh, in fact, someone else is using the band's um, fame to kind of, um, uh, you know, grow, make some money off of. I suppose you could say, isn't that what this whole thing is, though? What about? People who do album reviews and reactions. It's like, okay. Yeah, they're spreading the word about the band. There's, There seems to be a line somewhere, and I'm not sure what the argument really is. Yeah, think about that. It's just selling fake merch is like a bridge too far. You know, doing reactions and maybe hosting reactions on a behind a paywall. You know, that's kind of, but it happens. But it's not fake merch. That seems like something else. Anyway, anyway, whoa, whoa. 
People are making fake merch and it's selling. Like Re Repo Bob, do you have any thoughts on selling fake merch? Uh, I don't know if I should rope you into that, Repo Bob. Um, no, I went after the, I, I went after the, the Gaijin guys out of the blue over that. And it was like, I wasn't really trying to go after them. I was, um, <clears throat> well, I had been drinking that night and I was looking at their merch store and I was just like, this is pretty grimy. And then I just, I let my feelings go, man. As I do at times. But it's good to see Repo Bob about to eat and then assemble Star Trek Legos I bought about four years ago. Cool, cool. Yeah. <clears throat> um, maybe I should eventually stream something uh, that my kids could watch too. <laughs> I don't know what that would be. Uh, anyway, so more of the, the warning interview. I know that some people that would be like, well, it's kind of bad. But for us, it was like, oh, my God. Like, we're worth yes. fake merch. We're, we're worth fake merch. It was awesome. Now, I don't think awesome. the warning yeah, army yeah, likes I it, assume though. this is a, a, a pop culture oh, reference man. in Mexico. But I, I'm sure a lot of fans saw the, the plush toys you guys. All right. right. What is the story behind those? All right. So wait, it's plush not toys? a very straightforward story. Wait, 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 wait. How far does the plush toy go? How far does... The does the plush toy go? I asked that because I have noticed that there are some fans who take a lot of notice on the bases. I know why. What I'm asking is, is it a plush or is it a body pillow? What is going on here? Um, I hope, I hope the fans are being respectful. I'm just saying Yeah, Repo Bob said, I used to buy fake merch when I was a teenage going to a show. 15 versus 45. Yeah. Yeah, and that's the thing, too. That's where it's kind of like, well, I mean, how much money do you want to spend? And how much money do you really want to spend on a shirt? I support the band and all, but... Okay. Anyway. Let's uh, listen to more what they have to Sorry, say. Sorry, it just became like a meme out of nowhere. Uh, the There's a pharmacy in Mexico, a drugstore, sorry, called Farmacia Similares, and they have a mascot, which is this little doctor called Dr. Simi, and they make plush toys out of them. So people Dr. just like started buying them and decorating them and throwing them at artists during their shows. And I don't know, it just became a thing. We have like 30 what? of them, like no more. A plushes Probably of a doctor? They, they gave us a lot of them in Monter in Mexico City. And uh, it's really funny because we just played a headlining show in Las Vegas. And a fan from Hawaii That's gave totally us a weird. Dr. Simi. Like it, it's been- we bought it off eBay, decorated it, and gave it to us in Vegas. So we're sharing the Mexican culture now with everybody. It's awesome. Uh, no, you, we talked about it all of these months on the road. Uh, were there parts of it that were different than you expected? Were, was was some of it more fun? Was some of it more difficult? I mean, is it grueling being out on the road that long? It is very grueling, I so. especially not being in the same place for like 12 hours straight. Like it's just like you're moving around so much, it gets kind of like disorienting. But we've gotten to like see ass. and get to know a lot of different places. Uh, oh, we love New Orleans. New Orleans was very cool. I feel like more than anything. It's just that meeting that many people in a day, not being in the same city for more than 12 hours. Look, man, Swamp Pass is a real thing. If you're on the road for that long, you you, you are not pooping right. I hate to bring that up. It's probably TMI. But you got three ladies on the road, and it's like, yeah, it, it, it probably sucks. It probably sucks. Let's, let's be honest here. For two months straight, becomes really like strange it's really tiring at one point and you do miss your home your friends your loved yeah. ones and uh so when you get back home like you expect to be like oh i'm gonna rest but it feels really weird because now you are in a place for more than 24 hours so it's like you're at this really weird and it, space and you're just trying to get used to like accommodating back to your like 
normal life. I don't know how to explain it. So even though like we really do get very tired on the road, uh, when we get back home, we're itching to start again. To start yeah. Again, yeah. So uh, jumping off on that, coming towards the end of the year, wrapping up some dates. Uh, oh my God! Twenty twenty three holds for the warning. Wow, we actually have no, no idea. I don't know. I have no idea what we're gonna do for twenty twenty three. That's a question for Rudy. Where is but he? Right I don't know. Now, we're gonna be playing live. I feel like that's still very much of the focus. Course. We didn't play for two years straight, so I feel like we're gonna be playing for two years straight now to make up for that and uh, hopefully some new music at one point. But honestly, right now, we're just very happy that we're going to be closing the year. We're going to be closing in Colombia, at Rock al Colombia. Parque, I love huge. the way she pronounced that. It's the biggest rock festival in Latin America. Colombia. And we're going to visit Peru for the Man. first time ever. So that's, that's nice. That, that sounds pretty cool. It's, it's good to see you again. I mean, everyone is rooting for you guys to do well. It's, Thank it's, you. The rise is great. So Aftershock 2022 interview. I thought that was pretty cool. I thought it was pretty cool. The big thing I noticed was that thing about the fake merch and also the thing about the plush. It wasn't like a, really a band plush. It was like another plush, but like someone did decorate it for them. Okay. That's kind of cool. Kind of interesting. Interesting interesting thing there. And this stuff they learned from Hellstorm. Okay, cool, cool. You know, what 